Kingston, Jamaica, right in the center of central Kingston, yeah. down by North Parade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lane called Chancery Lane. That lane that I grew up on, right in the, the center of Kingston. And then I grew up in Kingston 11 afterward because my mom and my grandma, they were like moving from the city to the rural, to the more like the suburb. King Waterhouse, which is called St. Andrew, that was where I grew up some of my time also too, but I spent most of my time in Kingston, Kingston. I'm a more typical city boy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 What year were you born? So I could give you 1961. Everything. 61, right? Yes. So by the time you're like 13 and all that, then what sounds were playing that okay. you were being exposed to? I could hear various sound systems. I tell you mostly the sound, the, the music them that I used to hear was two record store two famous record store in Kingston, Jamaica, which was Randy's record store and Joe Gibbs record store. I could hear or heard every new songs that was released for that week or the next week. So they As would I, blast them out of the they store? They would blast them out of the store, yeah, because people would, they would play them just so people could hear which new song is on the market now, which song they're coming to buy. And those songs were like the Paragons with John Holt, Alton Ellis, Marcia Griffiths, Bob Andy, Ken Boot, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, Jimmy Cliff, Bonnie Wheelers, all of the greats, all of the pioneers. I could hear them from then, yeah. Was it the pioneers that gave you inspiration or was it a local person that kind of say, yo, you want to do music or you want to replicate The that? pioneer gave me that inspiration. The pioneers gave me the inspiration of music to sing. First to begin, my grandma had us going, we as our grandchildren, me and my other little brothers and sisters and cousins, we used to attend church and school also and the choir. But me on a major scale, I could hear the songs playing on the radios and even from the, the record stores and the sound systems of course. The sound system came about a little later when I was more up in my late teens. That was about like late 70s. I just want to ask. Yeah the radio were they playing american soul music or were they playing jamaican music or right both? the radio the radios were more playing more like american ballads like the jim reeves the brooke bentons of course the jackson fives and the the sam cook the natkin colt and all of those greats from America, black music and the world, they were playing on the radio. What, we, were there any American artists that gave you a vibe, that gave you a little Sam, version? Sam, Sam Cook, Cook. Yeah. Otis, <laughs> Otis Redding, Sam Cook, I could hear them clearly. They inspired me a lot too. As a singer, I think we are more somewhat, would I say, angelic beings from a musical standpoint. And we gather that inspiration. Anytime we hear a good song, whether it's a white person or a black person singing a good song, our, spo our soul gives in to it or connect with it. But truthfully, we used to hear a lot of Elvis Presley too, yes? And uh, uh, what is the name again? Pat Boone. And songs like, Born Free, as free as the wind blow. <laughs> Those songs we would hear because we were just coming out of colonizing from the British perspective and we were wanting to be more self-attained so songs like those were like appealing to my sense of purpose of writing songs which could be more formal to our well-being and social lifestyle because I came from a really bodied family unit with my grandma and my grandfather my uncle my aunt my niece my cousins and brothers and sisters so we were really neat together so I I think I was grow in that frame of mind to maintain as much harmonious ways in general with family values and social life orders so music was one of the things that I learned as I could have expressed myself through because while attending school I used to they, they, they used to teach us about some of our history and some of our history, one of the main part of our history, I could remember, there was a national hero by the name of Paul Bogle. I remember he was one of the ones who fought 
for the liberation and the, 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 the upliftment of our people. And I could remember how he had fought and what he had to do, and he would, was willing to die for what he be believed in. I could realize that, yeah, life is a song worth singing, singing. And if you need to live for something, you got to make up your mind to even die for it too. Yeah. So Paul Bogle gave me that inspiration, and Marcus Garvey, they give me a lot of... Peter Tosh also had a song which used to say, anything you can do, I can do it better. I'm the toughest. Yeah. Peter was a very self-assured person. Yeah. And he used to give me that motivation of being solid and more dominant within myself. When did you get exposed to like, the teachings of Marcus Garvey in your life? Those time was about in the 70s. I was attending school. So Marcus Garvey was one of our national era. Paul Bogle, when it comes to the the era time, like in about October month, we used to attend school and the teachers would enlighten us on our national heroes. People like Nani, Kojo, Sam Shah, Paul Bogle, Marcus Garvey, and a few more. But these few that I learned early out, Marcus Garvey, Nani, Sam Shah, and Paul Bogle, they were more profoundly to my interest of learning from whence I came and what was my four parents generation time was about. So with that, with that, the family knit, the exposure in the choir, getting some teachings about your history, mm -hmm. early in the music now, when did you start singing more in a public environment? Okay, come like about 1978, 79, I was now Performing, performing live on the sound system. And how did that start? And what sound was it? All right. I started out in Kingston 11 Waterhouse with a little sound system called Mellow Vibes. That was like our area sound system. Where, whenever the party would be going on, we'd be partying like Friday, Saturday or Sunday nights. Mellow Vibes was our special sound system. Between me and a couple other more younger DJs like Nicodemus. So Nicodemus was on that? Yeah, Tolo T, Pompidou. So that was a, a serious sound system? Then. Yeah, was it no was. Yes, 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 we made it. All right. Because in truth, in fact, the dance hall was almost, we make the dance hall to be our everything. It was our church, our school, our entertainment, recreation, recreation, and everything, expressing ourselves by even relating to our environment. Quick question. How hard was it for you as a singer to get the mic in the dance song coming up? For me, in the dance hall, to get the mic, it wasn't that hard because the very first time I got the mic, it was the same owner who owned the sound system. They knew that I could sing because they used to hear me singing just along the roadside or so forth. So when I get the mic, they gave me the mic the night in the dance, I sing and I was very competent enough. I know what I'm doing because I used to already sing along with the songs that were playing on the radios. I used to sing along for some of, sing some of the Sam Cooke song, the Otis Redding, the Jackson 5 songs. So I was very musical inclined from that time. So when I get the mic to perform live and direct in front of the crowd, I would do it easily, I never shy, or I never really feel afraid or scared. I just sing the songs. And the song that I used to remember singing, I was, there was a song called Sally. That was one of my first release also, back in 1982. Sally, when you married, say you bring me joy. First the girl, and you said kind of what? The loving of me, I don't take it for the time. Sooner or later, I want my baby. It was basically a lover's rock. Yeah. Singing a song like, I was wanting to grow up in time to come and have a steady life like my grandma and my grandfather, yeah. wanting to get married and live a humble life too. Yeah, 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 so yeah, these yeah. values are the principles that I was grew up on and I sing about them all together. Beginning of the 80s, I started, we had a very rough year. 1980 was a very terrible year for me as a youth growing up. Yeah. Because I saw the polit political rivalry was very dominant in Jamaica at the time. Black people were killing each other over political points and status or rhetoric or whatever they would see it as. And me, as a young youth, growing up, I never too approve of it because I know from whence we were coming from slavery to colonialism to what we happen to be now like politically 
divided. I know it was somewhat wrong for us. We never need to be divided. Yeah. So these, these were like testimony for me as truth, which I hold self-evident to see some of my other little brothers and sisters and them who had been killed over politics and knowing that Marcus Garvey were wanting us to be more self-sufficient and be as a race to stand up and be, a, and be counted and defend our true life and values are as human being. So, so these, these it, things. Was it during that time now because your, your music is mostly social commentary for the most part. And, right. And story. I, w I want to get into the social commentary before I get into the story, but yeah. was it those experiences that led you more to deal with a social commentary in the music? Truthfully, yeah. These, the, these situations, the environment that I was in, lead me to be more socially commentary, yeah. yeah. Because I was wanting to express. It's like, let's say, speak the truth and speak it forever. Cast it what it will. He who hide the wrong he do, will do the wrong thing still. When did you start locks and inciting Rastafari? What year was that? <coughs> start not even about 1984. You started at 84, yeah. but you was amongst the Rast earlier but, than Yeah, I was amongst the, the Rast because I remember when I was little growing up in the city, you had some elder Rast, they used to smoke their chalice, their pipe, yeah. and they used to call me and wanted me to smoke to with them. <laughs> and they would give me the chalice, but I was a little youth at the time, I never knew how to manage it. And I profit <laughs> sometimes and it would let me cough like crazy because yeah, yeah, I yeah. sometimes would take the, the smoke down too fast yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know how to manage it yeah. but as I grew up all, all together now even though I can blaze it yeah. with ease <laughs> burn the chalice with ease though yeah, yeah, but yeah. overall Rasta these two elder Rasta they were people in the community in Kingston at the time in the city this is a place called Pink Lane that's up by North Street era um, those Rasta they were like I would say they were like my uncle. Yeah. They were like elders. Yeah. But they take care of me. Give you a good reason. Good man. reason, yeah, yeah and yeah. show me love. Yeah. And I could see within them that they have that more harmonious way about them too. Yeah. As Rastafari, yeah. dealing with black liberty and all of that. Yeah, so yeah. I could I, I could gain that sense of purpose from them and that strength. Then when I hear the Bob Marley and the Peter Tosh and the burning spear. I was like, oh, these are the things that I need to know. Yeah. People telling her about her true self yeah. and singing songs about her, how much we must love and cherish herself and praise herself and sing about herself. So these are my motives of getting more social and writing songs that will enlighten and uplift. Moving, moving forward in the music Mo now, yeah. what song gave you the big break? And what greetings into the studio over a week. We were recording like two days, three days, four days. So greetings was also like that. Too. One time off on the phone. So hold on, the beat dropped, right? The beats, they were there, yeah. So <laughs> <we're down. laughs> and I was like, you live the life you love. Love the life you live. So the anthem was one take. One take, and yeah. And freestyle in a Freestyle, sense. yes. Freestyle in a sense, yes. Yeah, yeah, but I yeah. think it had entered the chart, the top 100, about 80 five or eighty six. Greetings. Top yeah, greetings, yeah. Wicked, because at that time, greetings, Anita Baker, Sweet Love, and um, Bobby Brown, my prerogative, they were the three top black songs throughout the world. <laughs> greetings, Anita Baker, um, Sweet Love, and Bobby Brown, my prerogative. Yeah. Were the three top black anthem at the time. Man. And even up to now they said greetings and One Love, uh, Bob Marley, One Love, are like two of the main songs that played as a reggae song throughout the world up till today date. Must be, yo, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> you can't go out dance and not yeah. hear greetings. Like, right. not greetings happen. to Ragamuffin, greetings to all Ragamuffin, yeah. In the song Greetings itself, the words that I say, for all the diamonds and the money and pearls, I hope your reggae music keep playing around the world, I am like trying to tell the story that music shall live and I hope that songs that we as Jamaican reggae artists is doing towards more life, love and liberty, it can be extended for even with third, fourth and fifth generation or the nations of the world can relate to it and keep a harmonious way of life. Thank you so much for watching I Never Knew TV. Please subscribe, comment, like, share.